In this video, we will explain how you can overcome divide and conquer tactics and the devastating effect this strategy has on society. But first, a powerful story that just might surprise you. This is a true story that took place during the first lockdown of March 2020. Rachel, a trained psychologist, visited the local park with some colleagues to see if anyone was in need. An elderly lady seated on a nearby bench started shouting, super spreaders and other accusatory remarks. This continued for a few minutes. Rachel remembers the anger rising up in her, wanting to respond in kind. She then recalled a conversation we had, not to step in the ring, metaphorically. If someone is rude, resist doing the same, as this has a little chance of a positive outcome. The elderly lady finally approached whilst muttering accusations. Rachel turned around, put her hand on her heart and asked, How can I help you, my dear? The lady was taken back. Rachel explained she was a trained therapist and was there to help. She then added, what we're all experiencing is not fair or right. Rachel then repeated, How can I help you, my dear? The lady then responded, I do not want to get emotional. Rachel said, it's okay, I am trained and I'm here to help. The lady looked up, paused and said, I just need a hug. This broke down all the barriers. And then what proceeded was a 20 to 30 minute conversation of connection, sharing stories and information. This conversation wouldn't have gone this way if Rachel had responded in a way which may have been justified. What is happening below the surface? The emotions that people are feeling are being attached to those who they think are causing their situation. But what is actually happening is that their needs are not being met. The fascinating thing in these conversations is that both sides are usually experiencing the same emotion. For example, those defending the narrative are fearful of the consequences of non-compliance. And those challenging the narrative are fearful of the consequences of compliance. So why was the lady so aggressive? Once we have decided a person is morally bad, the part of the brain which responds to rotten food is activated. This is why people feel disgust for those they see as immoral. This part of the brain speaks to the emotional part of the brain known as the amygdala. This part of the brain is responsible for the fight or flight reflex and also for violence. Rachel connected heart to heart, which moved the lady out of her aggressive state. When we mirror aggression, we experience conflict. But if we can respond with compassion, we can awaken the compassion in others. This brings up an interesting point that Matthias Desmet raised in his powerful interviews regarding mass formation. He speaks of the free floating anxiety that exists within the population. This has many causes, but to explain an interesting observation, we will keep it simple. When we have unresolved emotions from past experiences, we often attach these to events happening in the here and now. This can be seen with the virus. These emotions are attached to it, attached to this subject. This allows those pushing the narrative to use these emotions for compliance and behavioral changes and has people thinking when the current problem is solved, these emotions will be resolved. So how is divide and conquer implemented? It's very simple. Divide people into groups, give those groups labels, which place them in opposition, such as pro or anti a topic. The brain will do the rest that is witnessed in the story. This is where them and us is created. The politicians then orientate themselves into the us category. We are in this together. Over time, a caricature is created by the media's portrayal of the groups. We then respond to the caricature and not the person. There are numerous examples of this throughout history. Blaming minorities is a common strategy and diverts attention from those driving the policies. Once a person identifies with their group or tribe, studies show that they will dismiss all information from the other group. This is why breaking the illusion this divide is crucial. What is needed is a reorientation. We overcome 
this by transcending the divide, realizing the public are all on the same side and those pushing the agenda are the true them. From here, we respect each other's dignity and begin to challenge the narrative itself. Without the psychological trapdoors causing the divide, we unite and we work together as we often want the same thing. We will finish with an incredible story. Christmas 1914 during the First World War. The powers that be announced the truth to allow the soldiers to recover the bodies from no man's land. As each side started to do this, they began to cooperate and help each other out, digging the graves in the icy ground. Before long, they were celebrating Christmas together, exchanging addresses to keep in touch after the war, and of course, the famous football match in no man's land. The truce carried on as the soldiers no longer wished to fight. And this only ended when officers arrived, threatening to shoot soldiers that refused to fight the enemy as they were directed to. For further videos and information, visit reachingpeople.net or email us at info at reachingpeople.net. If you wish to know why people are behaving the way they are and how to actually get through to people, this is the place to visit. Thank you.